Hey, seniors, how you doing? Today is Monday, January the 23rd, and let's take a look at our assignment for today. And we're going to start this today. Uh, I think some of you will be able to get this done today, uh, but we're really going to kind of bleed this over into tomorrow on the 24th. And what we are looking at is the thesis statement for our persuasive paper. Now, what we've done is we started with this broad topic, right? Like, you know, the example that I've been using a lot is uh, affordable housing. And then you started doing some basic research and you kind of found these four broad areas, right? And, you know, I was looking at cost and location and I was looking at uh, the inequality of it. Uh, and then I was also, I forget what the other one I was looking for, but I had these like big broad areas. And then in my research question, as I looked at those to kind of create my research question, I really focused on one. And in particular, I was looking at location, right? I was looking at how location matters, um, not just like where these, this affordable housing is, but the fact that it's being it's competing with um, um properties that wanted to be gentrified, that people wanted to develop into higher end properties and stuff. And, and you develop that research question that really allowed you to go search for something specific. And the research question had that broad topic, the focus, and the real root of the problem that you were addressing. It also in a way helped you find that solution. Now, we didn't necessarily write the solution into the research question, but as we were doing our research and looking at the problems, then we started to see those problems or those solutions come through. So what we want to do today is we want to write the thesis statement. And the thesis statement is a one sentence statement of purpose. And it's really meant to do two things. One is it reveals to the reader what the argument is like what is the real argument that we have here what is your position on it uh, and then gives us some indication about how we're going to approach it so it really gives the reader some insight into what the paper is going to be about by giving that one main statement of purpose uh, it also serves as a as a guide uh, as a ruler or measuring stick or guidepost for you uh, and by that what i mean is that as you are doing your research as you are looking uh, or as, as you're doing your writing, um, everything that you find and everything that you use and everything that you write has to come back to that thesis statement, right? Like this is the one big thing I'm trying to do. I'm dealing with this problem. I'm dealing with this solution. I'm dealing with this perspective and I'm trying to get this one thing accomplished, right? So the, the thesis statement reveals to the reader what they're getting ready to experience, but it really is meant to help you also stay on track. We talk about some things that the, the thesis statement does not do. Uh, it does not include first person. So you're not going to write a thesis statement that says my position is or I want to do blank, right? Like it's no, we're not using first person. Um, when you use first person, the paper becomes very casual. Uh, and it loses some of that expertness, and we want to maintain that expertness, right? We want to maintain that level of professionalism, um, and, and so if we if we allow ourselves to be kind of uh, casual like that, we lose some of that edge, and maybe our reader won't take us quite as seriously. Um, the thesis statement is going to be a very clear statement, right? There is not enough affordable housing in places where people can use it. Right. Um, it's not just there's a problem with affordable housing. Right. Or I could see where there's some problem with it, but there's some benefits with it as well. No, we want to be very clear. We're taking one position, one stance, and we're going to say it very emphatically and very clearly. Uh, and then we also want to be careful of how we say it. Right. Like, um, I hope that you will see um, or after reading this, you'll see why you're wrong. Right. Um, you know, the thing about that is, so first off, both of those have an I, so obviously we're not going to use those, uh, but that's just an example. But in when we think about tone, right, like we don't want to turn our reader off before we get started, okay? And if you start with a paper that is hopeful or unsure or kind of wishy-washy, um, the reader doesn't get a sense of confidence. Like they don't feel like you really have a plan or you really are convinced about this or you really are sold on this, right? So if, if you're not strong like that, the reader won't uh, take you as seriously. 
obviously too if you are aggressive uh or mean-spirited or, or come across really brusquely uh again you turn the reader off or you have the potential to turn the reader off because they think that you're coming at them in a very adversarial uh way and and, and again that just draws that line that all of a sudden they're like oh no 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 i'm not gonna do that right and, and so you want to really kind of give the statement but we don't really need to add a lot of emotional layers to it. So if you look at the assignment for today, um, we have some different things. We have a tutorial. I have a video that walks you through the slides, right? So if you have the slides here, this is your tutorial video. And it's, it is literally what we are going to do in class. It just walks you through the, uh, the slides and how to do it. Uh, and then we have our assignment for today. And again, we're going to start this on Monday the 24th, on the Monday the 23rd, and then we will finish it on the 24th. That's why it's dated for the 24th. So we start off with some basic information about the thesis statement. Tells you how you'll interpret the significance of the subject matter. It's a roadmap for your paper. Keeps you on task. Um, it answers the questions ahead of you, okay, like kind of gives um, the reader a sense of <coughs> like, you know, where are we going and what are we doing? And it kind of asks those kind of questions. It is not a statement of fact, right? We don't want to say homeless or affordable housing is a problem. We know that, right? We want to add in that perspective. We want to add in that kind of viewpoint that you're taking. It does make a claim that is arguable negotiable, researchable, debatable, right? Like it is something that we can debate. Breathing is good. You can't argue against that, right? And, and and so, you you know, now you can argue like breathing bad air is unhealthy. And then we can talk about what unhealthy is and what bad air is and those kind of things and how to solve that. But, you know, we all have to breathe. So we can't just argue something that isn't arguable. Um, and it is one sentence, right? We're going to make it into one singular sentence. Now, um, here is a sample of what we are going to do. And we will do this in class. And, you know, we're going to talk about this in class. This mirrors the, the slideshow. You know, we start off with the topic, cheese dip. Now, for ours, I think we're going to be a little bit more kind of focused, right? For yours, you're like, it's not going to be just free college. It's going to be about, you know, the economic impacts of free college. So this is going to be like the subject in that focus area. The main idea, this is the thing that you really want to focus on, right? So you think about um, what is it that you're trying to accomplish, right? Like what is it you're trying to accomplish? Um, you know, we need to understand what the economic impacts of free college will be. Uh, or, you know, the case of mine, um, more housing has to be put in places where uh, it is more usable. Then the purpose. Now I filled that in for you that is persuasive. And that's just a reminder that this is arguable. Okay. Then what is your perspective? And this is where you kind of make that statement where you say, this is what I believe. Okay. So in this example, we start with cheese dip. Uh, the main idea is you want to know where the best cheese dip in Evansville is. And then you say those bravos is the best cheese dip in Evansville. We give some reasons why. Now, we're going to state three reasons, and, and this could be like problem statements. They could be solution statements. They could be uh, kind of some viewpoints that you have. Remember that we've divided this down into three parts, the problem, the solution, and the counter argument. And those might be really good three pieces to build in. Um, but when we get to the thesis writing, we may or may not use all of those, right? Like we may hit a couple of those. And then I give my thesis statement down here, which is, you can get cheese dip in a lot of places, but only Los Bravos has cheese dip that is thick, spicy, and inexpensive, right? And so what we want to do is we want to build that statement that really kind of keeps us focused and will give the reader a sense of what's going on. So if I roll back up here, you know, this again is the chart that you will be doing. Main idea, that's going to be your broad idea and your focus point. Um, we have your purpose already. We know what you're trying to do. Your perspective, this is your real take on it, right? Um, and this is where some of you really started to kind of hone in on things. Uh, for instance, my topic was affordable housing, and I narrowed in on location, right? Uh, so maybe my perspective here would be that uh, there is not enough affordable housing put in places 
that are beneficial or helpful to those that need it. Um, I might talk about, for instance, that, you know, it's it, uh, affordable housing isn't close to jobs. It's not close to schools. Um, maybe that it is in places that are uh, very dangerous. Uh, maybe I talk about how uh, it is not close to food sources like grocery stores or things like that, uh, like food deserts. And so I use those reasons there. And then I wanted to weave those pieces together into my thesis statement. Um, and, and, and I might write something like, um, uh, oftentimes there is affordable housing in cities, but it's not close to the things that people need, such as jobs and food. Okay. And, and, and that really helps me narrow my paper down. It gives a sense to my reader what I'm getting, what I'm doing. And it really kind of encapsulates this whole thing. Now, the difference between the research question and the thesis statement, because I know you might be like, oh, I'll just copy my research statement, right? Well, first off, that was a question. The thesis statement needs to be a statement, okay, a declarative sentence. Also, that thesis statement is meant to have answers, perspective, direction. You fill in some of those holes. Um, if you say, for instance, in the research question, what are the economic impacts? Well, you don't know what they are, right? That, that was what you were trying to find out. So the thesis statement then would be the economic impacts of affordable housing are, and then you would list them, right? Or talk about them or, or hint at them, lean toward them, right? And, and it is this idea that, you know, this, the thesis statement is almost like an answer to that research statement, right? It encapsulates what you found and what you plan on doing. So again, we are going to start this on, um, we're going to start this on Monday, on the 23rd. Uh, we do believe then that we will be able to finish it up on the 24th. Uh, starting on the 24th, then we are going to shift gears into the evaluations uh, and start evaluating our sources. And that you will, by the end of the week, have all of those ready. So we have all of our sources. We know exactly what the materials are that we're going to use. We have an idea of exactly what we're going to be writing about so that next week we can get into the actual construction of our paper. As you are working on this, if you have any questions, please make sure to reach out to Ms. McGuire. And good luck.